We've seen the damage that can be done by a pellet on Phil's terracotta clay, but what about the damage to the pellet itself? Well, Phil has the technology to analyse that too. What we do to trap them is put a big box of loose rags behind so that when the pellet hits it decelerates very gently and it doesn't deform anymore. You can then look at the pellet and see did it expand, did it stay in the same shape. And the ones that perform best on contact are the ones that deform the most, so wad cutters, hollow points and so on. As they're deforming, they're imparting their energy. Something like a Bisley Magnum, for example, has a lot of metal in it. It's a very rigid pellet. And even after one's been right through a rabbit, you'll find just a couple of small marks on the top, the cuts in the rifling, and the thing is just unaffected by the impact. Okay, so using exactly the same technique, I had this pellet in from H&M, which is one of their new hollow points called the Barracuda Hunter. Um, I have a 30 foot pound 2-2 gun on my firearms licence. I normally use the Air Arms Field in 2-2, which is a fantastic pellet, it's, it's my standard pellet. But I wanted to see, for comparison's sake, what the hollow point would do, and hopefully the camera can see that. At 30 yards, that expanded really, really impressively. And if you take a look at the two cores, the one in my right hand is my normal pellet. This is the hollow point. Look at the difference in the cavity size. Typical of a heavy dome head, it makes it quite a parallel sided track as it goes through. Whereas the hollow point, you can see has entered and expanded really violently and then tapered down very quickly. And you know, it's not hard to understand why a shape like that, traveling through the clay, would cause that expansion. Very, very impressive pellet.